So one of the things I talked about uh, yesterday was the, the fact that everything becomes literature eventually. All history becomes literature. Everything becomes story. And what I mean by that is as the people uh, who experience something uh, died or and as the pain of an experience and the actual uh, experience of an experience fades away, we tell the story uh, over time and we get meaning out of it. We either remember uh, you know, that there are enemies in the world, like 9-11. We remember there are enemies in the world. We remember we're defending something here that... Um, that um, Multiculturalism is a mistake. It's nonsense. It's not true that all cultures are the same, that some cultures are based on better ideas and make better cultures, and better cultures make better people. Even though all people are sinful and problematic, uh, better cultures, better ideas make better people. And I think that that was one of the lessons we got out of 9-11. But the telling of stories starts in the moment. And this is something I well know. I've been telling stories all my life. And you know, it, it matters how they're told and it matters what meanings are plugged in to the places where, uh, to the characters in the story. So, for instance, I never liked the movie Schindler's List, and this is not a, uh, a an attack on Steven Spielberg. It's a beautifully made movie. It's a spectacularly made movie. It's very touching. It's very warm. But Schindler's List, because Steven Spielberg is Spielberg, it became the Holocaust movie. It was the American movie about the Holocaust. And the Holocaust was not about people who saved other people's lives. The Holocaust was about evil. It was about death. It was about suffering in despair and uh, terror and torment. And to make it this uplifting story is to tell a lie about it. But that's part of history fading away. History fades away and we look to, for hope and we look for inspiration. And so a story can be true and not true at the same time. One of the things the left has mas mattered, mastered because the left have taken up all the storytelling positions in Hollywood, in publishing. The left dominates the storytelling scene. And one of the things they have mastered is how to tell a story that feels true, but is filled with untrue values. And my favorite example is V is for Vendetta. Watch V is for Vendetta very carefully. It's actually a fascist film, but it feels like a film about revolting for freedom. And people watch it. And every time I say it's a fascist film, people say, no, no, no. The individuals ri rise up and they revolt. But who are the powers that oppress them in the film? Because what the left does with these stories is they replace the true oppressor with a false oppressor. So in the V is for Vendetta, they replace the true oppressor that was threatening us at the time and still is threatening us to some degree, Islam, Islamist uh, radicalism. And they replace that with Christianity. The oppressors are Christian. The oppressor is parliament, the mother of all uh, freedoms that we have, political freedoms that we have today. And it, it the whole story is people overturning in the name of Islam and protecting Islam, overturning the Christian oppressor and, and overturning parliament so that the people can rule and they're all masked and anonymous. It's a fascist film. And they make you feel that it's a film about freedom by replacing the values of the, the actors in it. So in other words, the people who are acting to oppress are people who in real life want you to be free. The people who are oppressed are people in real life are oppressive. And that's a, that's a good trick that they use. And they're using it now in the news. They're using the same technique in the news because it wasn't, you know, just as they were celebrating 9-11, it wasn't just Joe Scarborough who made that incredibly stupid, low, disgusting uh, point that somehow Trump could be compared to a terrorist. In what sense? He dialed it back a little bit. He said, oh, I misspoke or I, I tweeted it out in the wrong way. But no, I mean, that was just a bad thing to do. And what he should say is, oh, my goodness, I made it. I got over uh, excited and I made a mistake, but he doesn't do that. It wasn't just him. Senator Angus King was out there trying to sell the narrative that somehow the Russian uh, attempt to affect our election, which was a couple of guys spending a few hundred thousand dollars on Facebook and hacking into things, was somehow related to 9-11. Listen to this. That was, I would argue, the beginning of an attack that's continuing today. They used airplanes into towers. Now people can use the click of a computer key in St. Petersburg, Russia, to attack. It's an attack that continues, and it's the same kind of attack today that occurred in 2001. No, it's not. He says it's a little hard to hear because of the echo, but he's the same kind of attack today with uh, Russians in St. Petersburg clicking on their computers as it is when you murder 3,000 people who will never come home to their families. And that's just absurd and insane, but it is a way of telling stories that the left does. And here is the thing. It's working. It is working to some degree. It's an article in Bloomberg. Here's the headline. There's never been a president this unpopular with an economy this good. It says there's little doubt the economy is on a roll. 
Uh, gross domestic product expanded at its fastest clip in four years in the second quarter. Unemployment is, in, is near the lowest since the 1960s, and wages look to be finally on the rise, which is a big deal. While consumer sentiment on the economy is currently higher than the average of any president since the polls started in the 1980s, Trump's approval rating, as measured by a separate poll, uh, is the lowest of the lot. And the circus in Washington, it says, is, is seen drowning out good economic news. So think about it. What's the circus in Washington? What is the circus in Washington? Trump is an obstreperous, loudmouth. He treats people badly, around the people around him badly, his employees. How does that affect you? That's just a story. It is a story you are being told. Oh, my goodness. John Kelly says it's crazy town or whoever said it was supposed to have said it was crazy town, even though they deny it, even though the people deny it, the rumor goes around the world before the truth can get its pants on. And you are being told the story. Oh, my goodness gracious. What a terrible thing. And one day Donald Trump may just pick up a phone and bomb North Korea and nobody will be able to do a thing about it, which is utter nonsense. And that's the story that's being told instead of the real story. 